A forced marriage is very different to an arranged marriage where you have two willing people consenting. A forced marriage is where you have one or both people saying, actually, mum and dad, I don't want this. Mum and dad are not accepting that. And then duress becomes a factor. And then they're pressuring you to go through with it. And that pressure can take various forms, psychological abuse, physical abuse, a number of things. And sadly, that person gets worn down, is made to feel guilty. This is their family. They love them then they go through with it. Then what that means to that person is, on their wedding night, they will be raped. Then they will be forced to stay with that person. Nine times out of 10, it's to a foreign national abroad. So they're taken out of the country, kept in some rural village, forced to sponsor that person into Britain. They end up in some dead end job to sponsor a visa so they can't have an education. And then they end up being in that marriage for the rest of their lives and it just takes away our life completely. We're talking about UK British subjects here, men and women. Predominantly, we deal with women who are affected. The most common group affected are normally young people. They can be promised into marriages from a very young age and engaged under the age of 10 or promised from birth to somebody. But when the planning of the marriage actually starts taking place and the pressure starts is when they're around 13 to 18 years old. Honour-based violence is now a national term that is adopted by all police forces and we recognise it as a form of abuse against men and women which is rooted in notions of dishonour. So for example, a family, certainly from personal experience I can speak, may have a system whereby you, growing up in Britain, are not allowed to do certain things that may bring shame and dishonour to the family. So you're taught that from a young age. So for me, it, w- it was things like you're not allowed to cut your hair, wear makeup in today's context, own a mobile social network, integrate into wider British society. And where there is abuse, it's termed honour-based abuse. So the family will deal with you by punishing you if you breach what we call an honour code. So if you are found to have a boyfriend that is going against an honour system and you can be punished for it, sadly, the extreme even forced into a marriage for it, or even murdered. The education sector is at the heart of prevention. That's where we need to be. So that means in schools, colleges and universities. There's two forms of education. That's educating people, there's that side of it. Educating future teachers who are going to be going out there into schools who may be in classrooms where our most affected groups sit. So we've got to make sure they understand what to look for. Then it's ensuring that we're in schools and talking directly to students, the affected groups, but also their mates, because their mates need to know about this so they can tell others, you know what, it's against the law, or there is a helpline number, etc. So education is extremely important, and it's where we need to be even more important than dealing with crisis, because you're preventing it from actually somebody being affected by a forced marriage.